What's up, everybody? Welcome to another part of Weapon Select, where today we are talking about the Stringers, the Stringer class. So this is another one of the newer classes of weapons that is in Splatoon 3. And uh, it's got a whole bunch of new mechanics for us to learn. So let's get started here with the Tri-Stringer. I'm choosing this one first, uh, because this is one of the more complex uh, weapons in the game, and definitely the most complex of the two. Uh, so I figure if we talk about this one first, then the reflux will end up being a lot simpler afterward. So, Tri-Stringer, it's kind of like a charger in that you press and hold the ZR button and then release the fire. Um, it's got a couple of different levels of charge, unlike the charger. Charger just has, you have charge or you have partial charge. Um, but the Stringer has two discrete levels. You can see that there are two circles that fill up here, kind of like a splatling uh, has. The, so if you just fire shots like this, you get tap shots, so without any charge at all. Um, and these four shots, although you can hit two of them at once, so you can decrease the time to kill if you're like right next to someone, you can it, at most two shot them. I don't think it's really possible to hit all three. Let's see if I can line that up. See if I can even hit it on the big target here. It is actually possible, um, at least on a bigger target. I don't know if that's actually possible on, on a squid. It's very impractical to try. Um, at most, you're probably going to hit two, and that's if you're really close up to them. So this is a useful option for if someone closes in on you because this is the fastest dps you're gonna get um your charge times are really quite long with your shots here especially the second level charge that's slower than the chargers so that's gonna take a minute and that's not something that's reliable for if someone's right on top of you so if you do get into a scramble situation it's these tap shots that you want to be going for and ideally you're aiming to hit two at once but that's Kind of impractical if you, they're a little bit too far away. So expect that to four shot. It's not ideal, but it's the best you've got in that situation. Now let's go to a single charge. So it's a single charge shot shows you the unique mechanic of the Tri-Stringer, which is that when you charge a certain amount, the arrows land on the ground and explode afterward. Um, so the shots themselves will do 35 each and so if you hit with multiple of course there we did 70 and th well, all three will do 105 so that it still can one shot uh, but they're wide enough apart that you're very unlikely to hit all three of those but the advantage of this is that those three shots go out and explode in a pretty wide array here uh, and a pr pretty wide kind of line. So this is really good, for example, for putting up on top of the tower to try and clear it, because it will hit on either side of the tower pole. Um, you'll miss one because one will hit the pole, but then the other two will land on the other side of it. So that's really nice. Um, and each of the arrows that you see on the ground will do 28. So there, all three of the explosions hit, so the 28 times 3 is 84. And there, for example, we got the uh, one shot to go through, so that did 35, and then a 28 landed behind, so it ended up at 63. Um, the, you can see how the combination of shots going through and then exploding behind can do a lot of damage in much the same way that an ex blosher's shots can. Um, and this weapon does get compared to that a lot, and for good reason. It is a backline weapon, that can hit up over the top of ledges with these arcing shots. You can see that that is going up and over the ledge and the explosion damage is hitting over the other side. So that's a really good option for it. So this is another way that you can fire this weapon that will do significant damage and put on a lot of threat. Um, this is a very common fire mode. Uh, it's a lot more common that you see single charge shots being used than that you see double charge. Um, the double charge is usually you're doing that for the one shot. Because a lot of the time what you're going for is some kind of combo that looks like that. Um, 
And then the double charge, you can see as you hold it down, the aiming reticles, the three, you can see the three dots there show where the three arrows are going to land. And they slowly converge towards the middle. And if you hit all three of them, it does enough to one shot. They each do 35. Um, and they will still do their arrow damage if they hit the ground instead. So they'll still get you the same 84. That doesn't increase in arrow damage or shot damage as you charge. It just gives you improved range and makes it much more likely that you hit your one shots. One shots are still not easy in this mode because unlike a charger, you have to hit all three of those dots on. And if you're off with one of them, that was off with two of them actually. If you're off with one of them, you only get the 70. So very unforgiving in that respect. But uh, it is the only option where you're really realistically gonna get your one shots. Now, what you might have seen there is a mechanic of the stringer, which is that when you jump, instead of being horizontally aligned, the shots are vertically aligned. You can see the reticles flipping as the bow flips. This makes it so that it's easier to aim these shots horizontally because you just find center of mass here and line them up there. That's better against the standing target for trying to hit the one shot because here it's easy to aim just a little bit off on the right or left. But if you jump, you've got a, a decent amount of leeway up and down because the targets are taller than they are wide. So if you're going for one shots, I recommend going for the vertical one shot. Vertical shots are also kind of nice for hitting up over ledges, like you see here. Um, if you're trying to put all of your shots on that one spot, then throwing the shots over like this is going to be better. Because if I try to fire horizontally, only one of those shots is realistically going to land on that narrow platform up there. Um, so if you know you've got your aim on side to side, vertical shots are the way to go a lot of the time. The horizontal shots are better for when you want to spread them out over an area and maybe paint it or control space. So if somebody's coming up behind you and you want to deny them all the area in front of you, you know, this sort of thing is going to do that a lot faster. But then maybe you go for this to try and do direct damage to them. Um, so that's sort of a thought there. And this weapon does not have charge hold. The reflux does. Um... So that is one difference between those two weapons. You cannot store your charge as you're swimming. Um, you have to fire it from standing. So that's going to make this a little bit more passive a weapon. It's going to make it a weapon that wants to stay on the back lines and not really be contested by frontliners. Um, this weapon is really good for doing chip damage. Um, you're not going to do a lot of like one-shotting people, but you can do things like get them to 98 like that, where the, your teammate just has to breathe on them and they're down. Um, Tri-Stringers go really well with weapons that have burst bombs, so if you're a splash player and you see a Tri-Stringer doing some damage to someone, just chuck a burst bomb over there, you're probably going to get them. Um, but uh, there are a lot of different damage combos, probably really too many that it's it's not as useful to name every single one of them you could possibly get, uh, but you can kind of see how they stack on top of each other just from these mechanics of the weapon. The weapon has a Toxic Mist, which is very situational. Um, it can be used in some cases where maybe you're not sure that you're going to be able to have a prolonged impact on a fight, but you can at least put that out there and it'll be there for a while. Um, so if you want like an area to get locked down for a significant amount of time, longer than you can just be firing shots at it, then a Toxic Mist might be the way to go. You can also, if you're too far away from a fight to do anything about it, you can just launch the Killer Whale in that direction and still have an impact in that way. Um, what I generally advise a Tri-Stringer player to do is to try and have an impact on every single fight that they can see on the map. Um, so whether that means firing shots at it, or whether that means maybe putting a Toxic Mist in place, or even firing the Whale if they're too far away. Um, but all of the tools give it the ability to do that, and so if you can possibly manage it, you want to be using those tools in whatever way is optimal to have the most impact on that fight that you can. So that pretty much covers the mechanics of it. Um, 
a really good painting pattern to follow is to aim up and then down. Uh, those of you who have motion sickness, you might not want to watch this particular part of it, but you want to go kind of up down. And that gives you a really good cone right in front of you. And so a good painting pattern is to do this sort of thing as you move around. That gives you very usable paint. It gives you pretty good coverage and it'll get your special pretty quickly. Um, but if you do just care about the special, um, it is also an option. So get this, I'll, I'll show you. It is also an option to just paint like this. Puts a little bit more paint on the ground, a little bit less redundantly. Um, the issue with painting like this is you can see how spotty it is. Um, this doesn't let you move very far. So this is purely, I want my killer whale as fast as I can possibly get it. Because um, if you're trying to paint for yourself to move or for the rest of your team to move, this is definitely the way you want to be going. It gives you much more continuous paint that you'll actually be able to swim through. Um, and it doesn't really compromise that much of the ink that you're putting on the ground to do so. Uh, just be aware that if you are painting in midair while doing this instead of painting from the ground, instead of getting this pattern where um, instead of getting this pattern where you get the wide spread, you're going to get this pattern, which is a much more linear path. Um, there are certain times where you might want one or the other, uh, but I would say it's probably better most of the time to go for the horizontal one just because it gives you a little bit more room to move sideways in addition to forward and back, and it has about the same range. That should cover about everything I want to talk about there, so let's move into a match. All right, here we go. Clamblets. So you are definitely the backliner of the team as a tri-stringer player most of the time. Obviously, if you get paired with another backline weapon, uh, then you might want to play a little bit more on the aggressive side, but you just do not have that fast of a kill time. And so you want to be playing more like an anchor a lot of the time. There we go. You can see there, I didn't hit a combo that does lethal damage directly from me, but because that player had already gotten damaged by my teammate, it only took, you know, maybe a 90 or whatever. Now I'm filling this whole area with things that are obnoxious to the enemy team. I can't stop them with my main weapon from there. So what I can do is I can put the killer whale through. Because a whale beats vac and things like that that block shots. It pierces through them. Same with the uh, crab tank. So... Definitely a useful special, and that was a really powerful push we were able to get off of all of that commotion that it caused, so. This is looking pretty good so far. Let's see what we can do with the rest of this game. We're firing these shots well in front of them to discourage them from trying to walk forward at us. We'd really prefer not to have to deal with them at close range. Fortunately, teammates are down here. I am running a good amount of ink saver here to try and uh, be able to keep maintaining a steady barrage of these shots. The weapon does take a, a good bit of ink. Okay. That was not great for us. I'm hoping that we can uh, get control back before they're able to get in with more clams here. This is okay as long as we don't lose lead, I think. Okay, this is fine. Something that is, it is important to note is that there is a bit of a laser on the front of these. Um, you are going to reveal yourself if you're charging in front of an enemy player and their sight lines. And here we're just going to fire a bunch of single shots because we don't know exactly where this player is and we want this to spread out and deal damage over as wide an area as possible. I'll launch this in a line because I bet they're all lined up behind each other trying to come up that ramp. Oop, did not mean to pick that up. I 
Ooh, that should get him. There we go. Nice. There's someone behind there. Yeah, there they are. We don't have to do a ton right now, except keep them from scoring. Okay. Good trade on my teammates' part there. That keeps them from really having the advantage here. Just gonna keep the shots here. Again, we're not going to have a lot of immediate stopping power. But... We can keep doing chip damage and kind of try to force him back here. Mm, that was a little too close. Thank you. That was well followed up by my teammate there. One there. Guys, guys, there's still someone there. Why did we run? Why did we run? Oh, okay, I guess we score. I don't know if that's worth it, though. That's just going to give them another power clam. I'm definitely not using my Toxic Mist as much as I probably should be. There are definitely some opportunities here to clog up choke points with them. Oh, this is so game. No way they don't find another clam and, and get it here. Uh, that's unfortunate. I think it was a really good game up until that point. Just... Uh, we All we had to do was hold the right-hand side ramp. And instead of holding it from where they were obviously pushing, we went for that solo power clan play. I think if we just played defense there, kind of hunker down, we're in a much better position. But I'll keep that game. I think that was a good tri-stringer game. I think it showed a lot of... Uh, what the weapon can do, and uh, I'm not going to feel too bad about having lost that one. Alright. That brings us to the Reflux. Might as well just go to mains. Uh, it took way longer to find than I would have otherwise. Okay. Now, the Reflux is a much different weapon because it's simplified a lot. The mechanic that makes the Tri-Stringer so unique, that gives it so many combo options, is the explosions at the end of the shots. And the Reflux just plain doesn't have those. Um, so that's not even something that you're going to concern yourself with. Um, but what you can concern yourself with for sure is getting missiles a lot. Um, this weapon is the best missile farmer in the game, if we're just talking purely with regard to how fast it gets them. It is also, I believe, the single best painting weapon in the entire game. Um, just doing this right here, that is an obscene amount of paint to get that quickly, and that is an obscene amount of special charge to already have for having painted that much. And so... A lot of the time, what you can do with Reflux is just play around the missiles, because look, I've already got them. And now we're going to get some more missiles. And we're already more than halfway charged on those. So, those tap shots are insane for painting. The Reflux, like I said, does not have those um, explosions. And so you're either getting tap shots or some kind of spectrum between tap shots and the full charge that brings all the reticles in. Um, so a tap shot does 30. All three shots does 135, though. So as time is going on, let's, let's aim so that we only have one reticle hitting. So that shot did 45, whereas the tap shot did 30. So once you start charging... You're going to do 45. And if you get all three, 45 times three is going to be your 135 here. So you only have to charge a little bit to be able to get the 45 shots. 
So if you're in like a close quarters engagement, consider maybe going for two of those as opposed to going for this, especially since the damage is a little inconsistent. Um, it might be worth it actually to go for two slight charge shots, depending on the situation. So that's something to think about. Uh, of course, as with the other weapon, um, the vertical charge shots are going to be easier to hit all the arrows on. And since you don't have arrows to be spreading around, it is much more often useful to be doing the jump shots because uh, there's no reason that you need to get the, the shots around a wider area unless you're trying to paint. And if you're trying to paint, you're probably just using tap shots instead like this uh, because of how fast that goes. Um, the main weapon is generally not as strong as the Tri-Stringer because it's just not going to do the same amount of chip. It's not going to hold the same amount of ground. Um, but one advantage that it does have is it has charge hold. Um, so you can do this sort of deal. Just like a uh, splat charger would. Just make sure to aim a little bit lower if you're going for the jump shots. Because, of course, the reticle is uh, going to rise up into the air with the inkling. So... Those kinds of shots are possible. Now, one thing to think about with this weapon is that it is also lower range than the tri the tri stringer. We'll get a range comparison here. Um, so here is ideal range, right here. That's hitting most of the shots anyway. And if we back up a little further, we're starting to get to fall off range. And now we're not hitting anymore. Well, we're hitting a little bit with fall off, but uh, from here, we can hit that. I believe we can hit this, yes. Let's see exactly how far back it goes. Right about to here. So, significant range increase that you're getting with the Tri Stringer. So, the Reflux is a lot less of a backline weapon. It is much more a midline weapon in terms of its range. Um, but, like I said, you're going to be playing this a lot of the time more for the missiles, more as a support weapon. Um, so, it's not necessarily going to be up there taking fights quite as often uh, because of the possibility to just get huge missile output. Something that you actually want to be careful about strategically with this weapon is that you paint so much with this thing that if you already have special and then you just paint all of this and you keep painting more you're denying both yourself and your team the opportunity for future special charge um, because now once i fire these i can't go back to this area to really get missiles a second time uh, you actually want to be strategic with how much you paint there are times where you may not want to paint an area so that when you return to it you're going to be able to get a special there again. Uh, this is especially useful in a case where, like, you're worried about being maybe spawn-locked on defense. Um, and you want to be able to get some missiles off to get your team out of spawn in that crucial situation. And in a case like that, it may be important to not paint everything that you see and to be a little bit more careful about how you use that resource of the safe paint to take Let's get a match going. Alright. Playing Splat Zones here. Splat Zones is going to be a pretty nice mode for this weapon just because of how much it paints. So you're going to be able to be the objective player for your team. And given that you're going to be spending so much of the time painting the map anyway, it means you're going to have a pretty high missiles output as well. But it's important to stay safe. Your combat potential is not that high outside of firing missiles at people. It's just a little bit unreliable to be getting high damage. You can set those kinds of shots up and get the one shot on players when they're, say, jumping in. But it's not always the most realistic thing get those all the time. Get some missiles out there. 
should make it annoying for them to exist on the zone here. They are having a little bit of trouble, but so am I. Thankfully, teammate was here, and nobody engaged us from the front. I am trying to, when I when it's safe to, get up forward and put down some more aggressive paint, because it is going to make it take a lot longer for my opponents to get in on us when I do that. And as such, it's going to help my frontliners push up and also help them hold the line a lot more. Um, so when your team does control space and you've got the, the zone under control, it's really useful to get that aggressive paint further forward and that can really accelerate your team's offense as well as locking the other team out uh, from a little bit further back so that even if you lose, they're going to take longer to get to the zone and you're going to score more. So that's a, a pretty ideal reflex game right there. Painted a lot, didn't do an awful lot combat-wise, was able to launch missiles a couple of times, and in all likelihood outpainted everyone else. Okay, so the brush actually was able to outpaint me by a little bit, but you can see here, other than that, the numbers are not really comparable in terms of how much paint I'm putting out compared to them, and that's how it's typically going to go. So that should be a pretty good example, I think, of how that's going to be played. So thank you, everybody, for watching. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe and to click all the links in the description and stuff and, yeah, yeah you know, shilling and everything. Um, we will be back with another set of weapons next time around. Hope to see you soon.